Camille Bijot. Antoine Fadevi. <laughs> What's up? How are you? I'm fine. Thank you for having me here. Yeah, of course. That was, that was really great. Um, can you talk a little bit about that song? How you came up with it and the drum parts and everything? Yeah, of course. Uh, so this song is a five against seven uh, polyrhythm, basically. Mm -hmm. The um, riff you can hear, the guitar riff, dun, 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 it's the rhythm from the five against seven. What's super cool with this five against seven polyrhythm is that you can play it from like a lot of different ways on the kit. You can play it in seven, obviously. Oh, it's five, sorry. Um, <laughs> yeah, you can play it in, in five, like I just sung, and you can play it in seven. But it's not the only possibilities. You can play it in four, like I, I did um, on the central part. Mm -hmm. And that gives a kind of a giant vibe. So I, I really love this. Yeah. And you can also play it in uh, three, in ternary feeling. And you can play it, uh, yeah, maybe in nine, but I didn't try it yet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I try to explore all these different perspectives we can have on interpreting uh, a rhythm that comes from uh, two separate um, groups of notes because that's really all it's about. It's, uh, you have a common subdivision, 16th notes. And on top of that, you can choose one pattern that you keep on a loop, one ostinado, like I did with uh, the five. The five is like... So it's one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, one on the 16th note subdivision. And on the other hand, you can play on the same 16th note subdivision, but your pattern will be in seven, will be longer. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one. And you combine them together, it, it gives a new original and longer rhythm that sounds like this. So that's really original and that's polyrhythms, I think, are um, a magnific <laughs> <laughs> magnificent way to create new uh, unheard rhythms. Yeah. And you can really compose music from that. You can use it uh, in your playing. It's a very creative uh, thing, so I love it. Yeah, that's awesome. I love the beginning of that song. Yeah, yeah that pattern is so cool. Um, so let's talk a little bit about your book, The yeah. Polyrhythm Odyssey. Yeah. Um, you released it about a year and a half ago? Yeah, right? in uh, December 2022. And um, so how did you get the idea to do this book? Actually, it was during the first lockdown during COVID. And I, I couldn't access my, um, my kids to practice because it was in a public studio and I was stu stuck with the pad. I could only practice the pad and practicing it gave me some um, educational ideas and uh, I started to think about you know uh, a method but it's funny because um, I really first started to think about a pad method but I I wrote down ideas, but I never got to do it, actually. And then I, I started thinking, oh, um, a method about polyrhythms and stuff, it could be great. And I started to write some um, parts of the books. I didn't get the definitive order uh, of mm -hmm. the parts right away, but uh, just starting with some parts like parts about ostinados, parts about how to approach polyrhythms from a very beginner side, uh, how to approach them easily, because um, it sounds very complicated, but I think it's not. It's, uh, and people think about it like it's independence and uh, 
you have to have several brains and stuff, and mm -hmm. I really don't agree with that. Uh, so yeah, I wanted to like share things, and uh, you know, I was used to already back then to uh, play some master classes, showcases, and clinics, and uh, do educational stuff. So I had some um, some plans already. Uh, some ways to um, teach things and to uh, explain things that uh, I wanted to yeah put down on paper and I thought it was a good idea but and until Covid I really wasn't into writing any drum method so it hmm. just came like okay that's now uh, it's time to do it and we had plenty of time with uh, the lockdown. Yeah. So yeah, without yeah. the COVID, I I think I would never had found the time to to do yeah. it. Especially because I also did the English version, French version. The French version I did all by myself. I had to find um, people to work with for the uh, editing, the graphism, the covers, and the prints and stuff. So it's. It's really a lot of work putting all everything together. It's yeah. uh, oh, it, it took ages for for me. Uh, even close to the end, I had still so much work to do and so much uh, like um, checking if everything was right and with the final book and the no mistake, no writing mistake and stuff. And oh, it takes age, <laughs> ages. And uh, when it was released, I was uh, I just. Uh, went to something else, you know. I, um, uh, it's it's weird. I didn't feel like Wah! it's just oh, I'm exhausted, and uh, now I can do <laughs> a new thing, and that feels great. Nice, <laughs> yeah. nice. That's but good. I'm really happy with uh, how it came yeah. out and uh, the feedback I have from people, and uh, yeah, it's yeah. a very um, cool thing to have uh, on the master classes or drum. Uh, shows to have with me and to share to people and uh, to propose to people because mm -hmm. it's very complementary with everything that I do. Yeah, so, yeah, that's great. And it's it's probably going to take people as long to go through as it took you to write because Maybe. it's so <laughs> it's so it's so involved. Uh, but it's yeah. really thorough, and the explanations are amazing, and uh, it's definitely worth it um, yeah. to go yeah, through. And, it, yeah, you'll learn a lot. I worked. A lot of explanations. It's yeah. not a um, systemical mm -hmm. method with just uh, exercises to, to do. It's uh, a lot of writing, like almost a story, and uh, with a beginning and the an end, and uh, you know, steps like this, and a lot of uh, exercises and writing. Uh, like I was next to the student trying to explain it, him my point of view or perspective mm -hmm. on things. So, yeah. That's great. So uh, yeah, talking about polyrhythms, um, I was I was curious, how did you get into them in the first place? Because I know that there's, you know, obviously you start music with the the basic stuff, and I know you played guitar too and sang. Mm. Um, but what what led you to, you know, wanting to be more involved mm. with it and want to geek out over patterns and stuff? Yeah. How did you get to that point? So I studied drums in the Conservatory of Toulouse with a great teacher, very uh, super cool teacher and drummer. He really does know how to play. <laughs> and his um, pedagogical approach is very, very clear. And he, you know, I think not everyone can teach, can have this teaching vibe, and he does. Um, so I was very lucky to study with him because uh, it was not just only a drum class. It was a drum class where we could study every modern style and, of course, uh, classical style. So we studied um, hand technique, hand phrasing, uh, jazz, pop, uh, rock, but also double bass pedal, drum and bass, jungle, and rhythmic illusions. Uh, it's um, it's a book from Gavin Harrison, mm. and that 
got me started with uh, the polyrhythm stuff because in this book you have a, ch a chapter on how to play, for example, uh, right hand on the hi-hat or on the ride uh, with playing a phrase in five or in seven over a 4-4 four -four groove. So you just get acquainted with, uh, you know, playing just one limb in a different group of notes than mm -hmm. all the rest. And then you can't stop, you just want to do more. <laughs> and yeah, no, not especially, um, it's just, I found it was very fun. I really took a good time practicing it. And then, you know, I, um, I finished the conservatory and I played in a bunch of uh, jazz, prog, or fusion, uh, old time signatures, bands. And uh, that's important, I think, to, to, to do if you want to get into this kind of stuff, because it's about every matter that exists uh, outside the 4-4 four, four and 6-8. So I practiced that a lot, but I wasn't into like polyrhythms or even doing five or seven, you know, over grooves. Uh, more into old time signatures. Mm. And one day um, I moved to the southeast of France in a, a little city called Valoris <laughs> between Nice and Cannes because my uh, ex boyfriend uh, just found, uh, just have found a job there, his first job, so love and all. I followed him and we started a, a life there. Uh, only for three years though, but it was really complicated for me at this time because um, I just finished my studies, my music studies, and I really wanted to do the job, to uh, go on tour with artists, to record in studio, to do everything that I could do, play with bands and stuff. And I just moved there. I didn't know anyone <laughs> and um, I had to start building a, a network, uh, going back and forth to Paris to do jam sessions and try to, you know, get to know people and uh, get to know as a drummer and, and stuff. I remember I um, saw some gigs from artists I really liked and tried to talk to them at the end of the show. And, like. Hey, I'm Camille, I'm a drummer and I'm available if you want a drummer for your next tour. I'm here, here is my card and stuff. So it doesn't uh, quite work this, this way. Uh, so yeah, I was, was really trying, you know, to find an entry door, but I couldn't and I uh, was struggling. But I had one thing that every drummer eventually sick. It was a place a studio where I could practice drums, my drums, acoustic drums, whenever I wanted, because it was um, a friend from a friend that was a sound engineer and he was always out doing the sound for live and the bands and stuff. So it, he never was at his studio, so I could really use it uh, when I wanted. So I decided to let go of it all um, because it wasn't working, obviously. And um, I started to just have fun playing the drums, uh, almost like I discovered it, you know, like just uh, really like a child playing uh, the drums and uh, ideas started to get out. I wasn't trying to always practice something or from a book or stuff, just letting myself play and see what comes out. And um, I had a first idea that really got me into uh, the polyrhythms. Uh, I found um, a melody. Can I play it maybe? Yeah, of course. A melody on the toms that was playing la like this. And so on. Mm -hmm. That was uh, pretty, yeah, it was pretty cool for me because um, I found it original, it was almost like a 6-8 melody, like... 
orchestra, but uh, there there was only one sixteenth note missing, and I was finding it really cool. And I was thinking I would like to play it on a loop like uh, forever and be able to play whatever I, I want with my other limbs. Obviously, I still cannot do that. <laughs> I cannot play all I want with my other limbs. But I'm uh, practicing it, and the polyrhythms are a super cool way to do that. So I found this uh, melody, and I was like, okay, let's find something else with my other limbs on the loop also, and see what the result will be. So I found um, ostinato with the feet that goes like this. So it's in six, actually. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. So it's almost like 12 if you double it. And my melody here was in 11. So there were two patterns that I played in a loop that was just one sixteenth note different for their lengths. So I started them together and then they shifted bit by bit and creating a whole very interesting song between the two patterns and very long song and actually I can play it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Nice. So that's uh, long but not too much. And uh, it was so original and uh, unique. I was like, okay, I love that. Let's find another yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> pattern to play on the snare. And then I explored a bunch of uh, different patterns, like in five, in three, in four, and uh, in, uh, in seven also. And from that, it took some time to practice and to get everything right, of course. And uh, I filmed it in video. I already was used to share some stuff on Facebook back then, Facebook, YouTube. And uh, I was not getting more than one or two thousand views per video, you know. And this one, uh, I put it on Facebook. It went average, like normal. And then like seven days later, it's got up to 11,000 uh, view and then uh, 80,000 views and then uh, mm -hmm. 300,000 views. Yeah, yeah that's when like, we... What's happening? Yeah, and that's... <laughs> and they're sharing, uh, sharing all over the, the world with, yeah, by different drummers. That yeah, that's when it. we first met. I remember that that's the first time mm. I saw that video. Yeah, exactly. And I sent you a message on Facebook. Yeah. And then we met up like... a. A few days or a few weeks later in yeah, Paris. Yeah, that's why in Paris. And yeah. Uh, yeah, I remember you were like, this video did so good, I don't know how. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. And uh, yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. So that was uh, really my starting point for my career, actually, because mm -hmm. from that video, I started to receive like calls for shows or for endorsements and stuff. Right. And uh, I noticed that it really interested people and uh, it impressed people like, how does she uh, do that? Uh, she has four brains and stuff. And I uh, was like, no, <laughs> it's only coordination. And I started to go with the independent stuff. Uh, it's independence. But, and I was always answering the comments, no, it's coordination. <laughs> and it's exactly the same approach than learning a groove, you know, okay. The hi-hat and the kick goes together, then there's the snare alone and mm -hmm. the snare with the hi-hat and stuff. It's exact, exactly the same principle here mm -hmm. for me. So yeah, it was uh, how, I, um, how I started it and it never ceased to um, impress me and to surprise me. So I think it, it's very interesting and very inspiring thing all that you can create from polyrhythms, the rhythms, but also compositions like I played uh, at the beginning of the masterclass. And uh, there's a, a, another composition that you will hear um, at the end of the masterclass too, that it's based from a polyrhythm. So yeah, that's, what, uh, that's how I got started with yeah. uh, 
all this. That's great. It's so interesting that you, uh, you were just playing something in your studio that sounded cool to you, and then you filmed it and put it out there, and it resonated with so many people. Yeah. Because it's great. like you, nev you never know what you can post that people love. Mm -hmm. sometimes, sometimes, you know, they don't really like it, and you're like, oh, okay. Yeah, it's so, quite and random. sometimes it's stuff you don't expect that yeah. people really love. It's quite random, and sometimes it, it's not the case here, but sometimes you can uh, even do something you don't really like and right. just post it, and uh, it goes, yeah. it goes uh, crazy, yeah. and you're like, but I don't like it, it's not good, <laughs> you know, why do you like it? So, yeah, yeah. it's really random. You, you cannot expect anything yeah. from, uh, you know, it's a surprise. Life yeah. is pr surprising like this. So let's talk a little bit about um, what we filmed today and yesterday. Yeah. Um, we've got a lot of content. We've got three courses, yeah. two master classes, a whole lot of performances. Yeah. Um, and it's very varied. You did a thing about uh, feet ostinato. You did some ways of, uh, or, or interesting ways to pr practice with a click. Yeah. Um, and some other really cool things on polyrhythms and such. And patterns, um, yeah. Yeah. So let's... Um, can you touch on the feed ostinato stuff that you did with us, the bio pattern, and uh, yeah. kind of talk a little bit about what that course is about? Yeah, of course. Um, it's about how to approach phrasing over uh, ostinados, especially feet ostinado. You know, when you play a solo or even uh, some music styles like samba, bossa nova, salsa, it's really useful to know how to lock, you know, the, the ostinado on the feet and to be able to play whatever you want um, on the, with the hands. So it's really about that and uh, step by step from a very easy, um, easy patterns, easy things to more complicated things and even polyrhythmic things uh, over the ostinados. Awesome. Yeah. Can you demonstrate a little bit of it? Yeah, of course. So, um, the ostinado I chose for uh, the example and the solo is the bio ostinado. So it's... Uh, and then, yeah, do I play a little example solo? Yeah, of, yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. Because I know you... Uh, you touched on the single accents, double, and then the odd, uh, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, it was uh, everything in 4-4 four, four first, yeah. like uh, groups of four. Right. And then, uh, yeah, single strokes, double strokes, exploring, you know, the 16th notes, the accents inside everything. Yeah. And then expanding the length of uh, the patterns and going into five, seven, mm -hmm still over the ostinado, which still uh, stays in four, for four. Yeah. yeah, yeah, maybe try some of the, like, the, the single, single accents. Yeah. Then some double, and then some harder. Stuff. Yeah, okay, let's do that. Yeah. So cool. <laughs> so cool. So that's what you can do after learning my course. <laughs> yeah. 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 Love it. Great. You also sing very beautifully. Thank you. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so you did a performance for us of what's the song title? It's uh, Dancing in the Flood. Yeah. Beautiful song. And uh, yeah, so check it out. We just released it. And um, can you, I had, I had this question, while you were singing it, I was curious to know how you got to that singing voice. Because it's, it's very particular, mm -hmm. and when you first start singing, you're not too sure what you're supposed to sound like. Mm -hmm. and, but I know you've sang for a while, since you were a kid playing guitar and singing mm -hmm. your thing. So how did, you, how did you get to that point, especially with that song? Yeah, um, as you said, it's been a while I've been singing. Uh, I started singing and playing guitar and 
doing cover songs or writing my own songs from uh, 15, 16 years old. Um, and it was always in a pop folk style. And that's funny, it's a very good question you have because with that song specifically, I usually sing medium or low, you know, and that song, I don't know how I found the, the main melody of the chorus, but uh, it was really one of the first time I explored uh, this kind of uh, pitch area. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't know, maybe there's a, it's weird to say that, but maybe there's a mystical approach to it <laughs> because, uh, you know, I, f I think it's a very, at least it was a very important song for me when I wrote it because uh, it really, I had to express this uh, feeling of, uh, you know, despair in the world that we live in. But uh, even if you feel this, despaired you you keep going because there's a powerful force inside you live the life force that uh, keeps you going and uh, the hope and the love and uh, all the the things that we we carry in the the heart that is stronger than everything so i really needed to express the to write that song and uh, yeah, when I wrote it and found the, the lyrics and the um, melody, I, I didn't try to control really the thing. And uh, I was pretty much surprised myself with the, how it sounded with the, the voice. Uh, but yeah, I think it was maybe one of the, of the song that I needed the most to express. And then, uh, yeah, that it's a pure thing that comes out of it. And uh, I just let myself transported by it, you know, and uh, I didn't think too much about the voice and uh, just try to sing in tune. And uh, I think there's um, the reverb and the treatment I made with the backing mm -hmm. vocals really helps with this kind of ambience too and really helps finding this kind of voice actually this kind of uh, you know emotional and almost mystical yeah. voice uh, I think I couldn't do it the same way if uh, reverb didn't exist, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know? So yeah, reverb I think is very important on this one. And uh, yeah, uh, that's it. <laughs> cool, very cool. Did you, did you sing and play drums when you were a kid too? No, actually that's pretty new to me. I started singing and playing drums when I was um, um, playing with a trio, with my the face trio. It's um, she's a super cool uh, soul jazz singer, and we were in trio with only girls, a keyboardist and myself, and we did backing vocals. And it was like two, three years ago, and I started really to dive into it and you know figuring out how to sing while holding a groove and it was always um, on grooves that were simple you know, because uh, that's important to start simple mm -hmm. uh, and then when you get used to it you can uh, go on working with uh, more difficult grooves or more difficult melodies um, but uh, yeah except from that and that gave me confidence enough to say, okay, uh, I've always I've sung from a, a very long time and uh, I play drums. I would like really to find a way to combine the two universes, you know, the pop folk singing and the powerful prog uh, drum style together. And uh, that's when I, I wrote this song and try to uh, combine the things together. Very interesting. Yeah, it's very unique. Yeah, mm. I love it. And by the way, we 
filmed a master class all about breaking down this song and talking about singing yeah. and drumming. Exactly. So it's up on drumchannel.com right now. Go check it out. Yeah. Um, seven day free trial. Don't hesitate. And uh, so I wanted to touch on a couple just like lifestyle things. Just like throw some questions okay. at you. Lifestyle. Um, I love it. What's a week in your life look like in Paris? You're biking around, <laughs> going to the studio. Yeah. Um, like, yeah, what, what, what do you do? How do you go about your life as a drummer? Uh, so, yeah, um, as you said, I uh, bike a lot <laughs> because it's really easy to bike in, uh, in Paris. Uh, I have a studio that I rent with a friend. Uh, it's a, a bunch of different studios and we can rent uh, uh, monthly, you know. So I share a studio with a friend. Usually I go practice drums on the mornings, uh, maybe three, yeah, two, three hours. Four, I can go up to four, but uh, it's more, it's less common. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, I practice the drums. I always start with um, uh, like half an hour of just letting go, playing whatever I want and uh, having ideas and noting, uh, like recording it, uh, recording them to, to use them for um, compositions or just uh, to work them and to make uh, videos uh, out of that, that I can share on the socials. Um, and then I uh, start practicing whichever song I have to practice for bands or for my own uh, events like drum shows or master classes and stuff. And um, yeah, on the afternoon, I, uh, besides all the, the mail thing, the preparing for events, organizing the travels and stuff, because I do uh, all this, uh, this by myself, um, I care about the socials too. I try to always uh, do some socials uh, content. And uh, yeah, I recently, I focus on writing songs and try to do drafts of the song, recording, you know, the voice, the guitar, um, programming, bass, drums and stuff. The goal is to to do a proper recording, mm -hmm. recording now for these songs because I always composed and uh, do drafts like this, but I never put songs into the real studio with mm -hmm. a real sound engineer and real artistic director, a label, or I don't know. Mm -hmm. uh, never released properly a song, and that's what I really want to focus on right now. Uh, so I don't have any other projects right now, just focusing on, on this. But uh, yeah, it takes time and you know, life, how life can, can be. Uh, the, the more I grow up, <laughs> the more, uh, the fastest, the faster the, the days really uh, go. And um, yeah, it's difficult to find some um, moments to just think about nothing or relax. Um, I try to go to the swimming pool one, uh, once a week, actually, because, uh, you know, swimming pool, like, I don't know the, the name of this. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> the crawl, uh, back, back in. Backstroke. Backstroke. I practice a lot of backstrokes <laughs> because it opens here and it muscles uh, deep, but not uh, too, too hard. So it's, it's really nice. And uh, yeah, I try to see my friends sometimes, but uh, actually I think it's difficult as an adult uh, to meet as often as we were used to be uh, when we were teenagers or stuff, to meet with friends because they have their lives too. We almost have to set up, uh, you know, a schedule and so, say, okay, in, uh, two months this day we are <laughs> both available so let's meet and yeah it's complicated to keep um, track of relationships like this and to go deep into relationships uh, i think when you're um caught up in uh, 
in this kind of life where you have to think about everything, to practice, to organize, to edit, to compose, to uh, almost to mix yourself stuff. And you really have to wear a lot of different hats mm -hmm. for the same person. So days go very fast. Um, but yeah, try to find some days off uh, sometimes, but it's complicated because you feeling guilty almost you have so many things to to do and you're like you cannot rest because as long as you didn't do the thing you have in their head you cannot really properly just uh, rest it has to be the mind has to be available uh, to rest properly I mm -hmm. think. but yeah that's pretty much what cool. it looks like <laughs> cool very cool um dave weckel signature stick Oh yeah. What's that about? Tell me. I really love those sticks. I think I've been playing them for seven or eight years now, or maybe more. Actually, it's not because it's Dave Weckl's signature, but uh, I think they have, for me at least, a perfect balance. They are long, not too short, but not too long. Uh, I like to you know, be able to reach the symbols very, very far away. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, that they are heavy, but not too much. And uh, yeah, I really love, love the shape, even the tips, mm -hmm. the shape of the tips. Yeah, those barrels sounds great on the toms. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I think it's really great. The only thing with these sticks is the paint, yeah. the brown-red-ish uh, paint. Yeah, I can see that. And uh, it always feels like you have blood on your right. snare. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so maybe if I do my own, um, if I make my own signature one day, we have the same one, but just uh, not red. <laughs> just not yeah. red. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Cool. Well, thanks for joining us. Thank you. This was great. Uh, and you're going to play another song of yours, Anatman? Yeah, from a um, polymeter uh, piece. So um, it's a polymeter that is uh, quite the same style as the one I explained I found at the beginning. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's a melody in, um, in seven, like... But as I have this eight-inch tom, I can move it so... like this and, uh, and then I have a uh, ostinado on the feet in five and on the snare like the other poly rhythm like the first video I explore a couple different patterns in three in four in five in seven and even in nine I think and uh, yeah I thought uh, we could really do a composition out of it. Mm -hmm. Like uh, you have a guitar, a keyboard riff that is uh, playing the same thing as your main melody on the tom. You have a bass pattern that is fitting your, your pattern, you know, like this. And you have a, I don't know, keyboards or uh, guitar um, accents that are matching what you do with the snare. And it can really come out and... Uh, an infinite possible ideas of composition. So I tried to, that's the first composition I made from Polyrhythms and uh, it's called Anatman. Cool, very cool. All right, let's hear it. But first, don't forget to check out all of Camille's content on Drum Channel, uh, seven day free trial, bunch of courses, master classes, everything we've talked about today in depth. It's really cool. And the Polyrhythm Odyssey available on uh, Hudson Music. Yeah. Go check it out also. And um, yeah, let's hear it. Yeah, <laughs> let's do it. <laughs>